Well, this is coming when, you know, there's all of this wealth and you hear about it comes as England is facing rising costs of living, a living crisis, a, a austerity budget cuts and so on. And then you have the, those who are asking uh, for reparations for colonialism. And they're wondering, you know, one hundred billion dollars, twenty four billion dollars here and there, five hundred million there. Some people want to be paid back and uh, and members of the public are wondering, why are we suffering when you are? You know, you have all of this vast wealth. Those are legitimate concerns. Well, I think you're right about reparations in terms of if people want it, though, what they need to do is you always need to go back to the beginning of a supply chain. Where was the beginning of the supply chain? That was in Africa. And when that crossed the entire world, when the slavery was taking place, which was the first nation in the world that abolished sla uh, slavery? The first nation in the world to abolish it. It was started by William Wilberforce, was the British. In, in Great Britain, they abolished slavery. 2,000 naval men died on the high seas trying to stop slavery. Why? Because the African kings were rounding up their own people. They had them on cages waiting in the beaches. No one was running into Africa to get them. And I think you're totally right. If reparations need to be paid, we need to go right back to the beginning of that supply chain and say who was rounding up their own people and having them handcuffed in cages. Absolutely. That's where... They should start. And maybe, I don't know, the descendants of those families where they died at the, in the high seas trying to stop the slavery, that those families should receive something, too, I think, at the same time. It's an interesting discussion, Hillary. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We'll continue to, to discuss in the future. So remember the impact of the supply, the supply chain crisis on the economy during.